discuss today is normal distribution. Here, I will be discussing graphs of normal probability distribution, standard units and areas under the standard normal distribution, areas under any normal curve, and normal approximation to the binomial distribution. First of all, for the normality test, in statistics, it is used to determine whether a data set is modeled for normal distribution. Why? Because many statistical functions require that a distribution be normal or nearly normal. There are both graphical and statistical methods for evaluating normality. We have graphical methods. It include the uh, histogram and normality plot. Statistically, two numerical measures of shape. We have skewness and kurtosis that can be used to test for the normality. Okay, so you can still remember, skewness is a measure of symmetry or more precisely, the lack of symmetry. We compute for the skewness using the formula, skewness is equal to 3 times our mean minus our median divided by our standard deviation. Okay, so... If the mean is greater than the median, then it's positively skewed. If the median is greater than the mean, then it's negatively skewed. Okay? If our skewness is equal to zero, then it is said to be normal. Okay? So for our kurtosis, it is a measure of whether the data are heavy-tailed or light-tailed relative to a normal distribution. In kurtosis, we compute for this by using the formula. Kurtosis is equal to Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2 divided by P90 minus P10. Okay, so again, Q3 minus Q1 over 2, this is our quartile deviation. Q3 minus Q1, this is our interquartile range. And if kurtosis is equal to 0 0.265, then this is normal okay so we have it here so you can see here this is the negative kurtosis this is said to be platycortic this normally distributed curve this is mesocortic okay and this one for the positive kurtosis this is leptocortic okay then, for the graphs of normal probability distribution, as you can see, we have here our normal curve, where the center is our mean, okay? So the curve is bell-shaped with the highest point over the mean mu. It is symmetrical about a vertical line through mu. Then, the curve approaches the horizontal axis but never touches or crosses it. For the inflection points, the inflection or transition points between cupping upward and downward occur above mu plus sigma and mu minus sigma. That is one standard deviation from the mean. For our example, the points A, B, and C are indicated on the normal curve in the figure. One of these points is mu, one is mu plus sigma, and one is mu minus 2 sigma. Okay? So we have there A is 6, B is 10, C is 12. Which point corresponds to the mean? What is the value of mu? Then which point corresponds to mu plus sigma? And which point corresponds to mu minus 2 sigma? Okay? So in our figure, our mean is, we have 10. This is our mean. For our mu plus sigma, we have here our 12. This is mu plus sigma. And mu minus 2 sigma is, we have A or 6. Okay? This is mu minus 2 sigma. What is our sigma? Of course, if 
mu plus sigma is equal to 12, our mean is 10 plus sigma is equal to 12, then sigma is equal to, we have 2. Okay? Next is for the empirical rule. Or it is also referred as to as the 3 sigma rule or 68.95.99.7 rule. It is a statistical rule which states that for a normal distribution, almost all data falls within three standard deviations denoted by sigma of the mean denoted by mu. Broken down, the empirical rule shows that Approximately 68.2% of the data values will lie within one standard deviation on each side of the mean. Approximately 95.4% of the data values will lie within two standard deviations on each side of the mean. Approximately 99.7% or almost all of the data values will lie within three standard deviations on each side of the mean. Okay? So to illustrate, we have here our normal curve, okay? So we have there, this is our mean, and one standard deviation from the mean, okay? We have there 68.2%. 95.4% of the data lies where? From mu minus 2 sigma to mu plus 2 sigma. And then, of course, 99.7% 99 of the data lies where? Between mu minus 3 sigma and mu plus 3 sigma. Okay? So, this is our area. Okay? Example. The yearly wheat yield per acre on a particular farm is normally distributed with mean of 35 bushels and standard deviation of 8 bushels. So what is the probability that the yield will be between 19 to 43 bushels per acre? Okay, so we have there, our mean is 35, okay? So for mu plus sigma, that is 35 plus 8, our standard deviation is 8, that is equal to 43, okay? So we have it here, 43, that is mu plus sigma. Okay, then for mu minus sigma, that is 35 minus 8, okay, so that is 27. Then for mu minus 2 sigma, that is 35 minus 2 times 8, we have 19. So it's here, we have mu minus 2 sigma, we have 19. So the area from 19 to 43, okay, that is from mu minus 2 sigma to mu plus sigma, we have there 13.6% plus 34.1% plus 40 at 34.1%, that is equal to 81.8%, okay? Another example. The playing life of a sunshine radio is normally distributed with mean of 600 hours and standard deviation of 100 hours. So what is the probability that a radio selected at random will last from 600 to 700 hours? Okay, so let us draw our normal curve. Okay, so our mean is 600, our sigma is 100. So, mu plus sigma, we have there 700. So, we all know that 700 is located where? That is, one standard deviation from the mean, mu plus sigma. And this area, according to the empirical rule, is what? We have 34.1%. Or that is half of 68.2%. Okay? So, what if the question is, what is the probability that the radio selected at random will last until 700 hours? Okay, so that will be or that will include the other half of our normal curve, which is 0 0.5 or 50%. So the probability that the radio selected at random will last until 
700 hours is what? That will be 50% plus 34.1%. That would be 84.1%. Okay? Another example. Assuming that the heights of college women are normally distributed with mean of 65 inches and standard deviation of 2.5 inches. Answer the following questions. What percentage of women are taller than 65? So, let us draw our normal curve. Okay? If the mean is 65 inches, okay? So, what is the percentage of women taller than 65? So, we are pertaining to this area. And that is what? 50%. Okay? So, what percentage of women are shorter than 65 inches? Again, let us draw our normal curve. Okay? So, we have here our 65. What percentage of women are shorter than 65? So, it is this area. Okay? So, that is also 50%. Okay? Then, what percentage of women are between 62.5 inches and 67 inches? Okay, given that our mean is 65 and our sigma is 2.5. Okay? So, in our normal curve, it is located where we have here our 1, 62.5 and 67.5 is just mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma. That is 65 minus 2.5, that is 62.5. And 67.5 is 65 plus 2.5, that is 67.5. Okay, so this area is mu plus minus sigma, which is 68.2%. Okay, so what about the percentage of women between 60 inches to 70 inches? So that would be, okay, we have here our 62.5. This is our 67.5. What about... 70 a uh, 60 and 70 okay so we have there 65 for mu minus 2 sigma that is 65 minus 2 times 2.5 that is equal to what we have 60 and then mu plus 2 sigma that is 65 plus 2 times 2.5 that is 70 so this area Okay, we have here 60 and 70. That is, we have mu plus minus 2 sigma. And that is according to the empirical rule, that is what? We have 95 point, we have 95.4%. Okay? So, for the last example, what percentage of the area under the normal curve lies to the right of mu? Okay, to the right of mean, we have, if this is the mean, to the right of mean, that is 50%. Between mu minus sigma to mu plus 2 sigma, that would be 1 sigma, 2 sigma. That is 95 point four percent what about to the right of mu plus three sigma so we have here to the right of mu plus three sigma so what is this area okay that is okay so we have here until here that is half of no not this this one half half of 99.7%. What is half of 99.7%? We have... We have 49.85. That is half of 99.7. 99.7 divided by 2, that is 49.85.
and to the right of this this area that is to the right of mu plus 3 sigma that is 0 0.5 we all know that this area half of the normal curve is 0.5 minus okay we have 0 point Forty nine eighty five, which gives us one point five times ten to the negative three. Okay.